Hallelujah, hallelujah. I think you can do better than that. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. God bless you all. You may have your seat now. Thank you. It's always a pleasure to be here. It's true that in Dallas we have the sun here. It's something different. So it was very cold. I was like, hmm. It's not because God want me to come here, honestly. But I'm here to serve him. And I'm here to bless your life this morning. Amen. Yeah. So I like to salute everybody. Long time from. It's not me. It's COVID, though. You know? <laughs> I wanted to come, but COVID said no, so I had to stay. It's the first time in a year I didn't travel. That's my first travel. I was like, wow. You know. Every time I have to travel out of the country, but now, well, I'm here. Amen. Amen. God bless you. I'm going to, I have so many things I need to say to you. So right now I'm trying to put everything together so that I can give you the best before you can enter in 2021. I'm here to prepare you for 2021. The mission that God asked me to do. So after a year, I have to go to Austin. And then I'll go to Paris over there because I have a mission too. And then we enter in 2021. Amen. Amen. But before we can start it, I think we have a baby dedication. Yeah, it, it, she's coming. So we're going to do it later. Okay. Let's take our Bible. I just saw the boss. He, he got married uh, when? Last week, two weeks ago. Can we clap for them? Yeah. They got married. You, know, you want it to keep secret, no? Why are we going to keep it secret? It's a good thing. We bless God for it. Amen. Amen. So, if, if they want to talk, let them talk. Mm, that's the business. Uh... I want to talk about dolls. Okay? You need to understand that it's not because you enter in 2021 that you enter 2021. Having a new year does not mean you enter in the new year. You can be in a new year but still living a life of 2020. Hello? So tonight, uh, today we're going to be prophetical and we're going to pray a lot. I want to talk about dolls, but you need to understand something very, you know, when God showed it to me, I was amazed. Because you can still be, you can be in 2020, but your, your spirit is still in 2000. So you're in a new year, but you don't live the new year reality. And you don't have the blessing of this new year. And the funny thing about the devil, he's going to keep you somewhere. Not because he, he, cannot, he doesn't want you to be blessed, but he wants you to waste your time. Because time is something you cannot redeem or get back like this. So Every delay in our life, they are just there for you to waste your time. And this morning, I want to deal with it so that as soon as 2021 comes, you already there. Say amen well. Amen. You know, I'm a free speaker, so I don't care if my English is broken. <laughs> you take it and you leave it, okay? Yeah, so... um. I don't care. Just get the message, okay? <laughs> yeah, let's go. Let's go to our Bible quick. You know, because of time. Let's start with Isaiah 20, 20, 43, verse 18. Zach, like I'm gonna preach four messages or five messages, okay? So can somebody can read it for me? Do not remember the former things. 
nor consider the things of old. Next verse. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, I want to bless your holy name this morning. It's about your word. And we know that your word is powerful to change life. Let this word enter somebody's heart. Let them receive that word with gladness. And let the word produce a miracle in their life. Bless this moment. Thank you for the anointing to teach and to preach. Do whatever no man cannot do and take all the glory in the name of Jesus. Amen. You may have your seat. Let's talk about doors. Amen. Doors are very important in life. For anything you want to achieve in life, somebody has to open the door for you. So when you see doors like this, you need to understand that it's the same thing in the spiritual realm. Everything you see here came from there. It's just because there is door over there that there is door here. If you read your Bible, you, you know the story of this guy. He was close to the king, and there was like famine, whatever. And for three years, they didn't eat. So the prophet came and said, tomorrow at the same time. And the guy said, oh, even if there was windows in heaven, something like this cannot happen. And the prophet said, you see it, but you're not going to eat it. Because there's windows and doors in heaven. Amen? So, before I can go deep in this teaching, I will just want to deal with some issues. Because sometimes doors can be open, but you don't even see them. Hello? I don't know if I can go. Yeah, go. The door can be open, but you don't see them. Or the door is there, but you don't know what to do. You know? This is why the word of God is the most important thing in somebody's life. You know, God can do everything only through his word. If you want to, the word is the limitation of God. What the Bible said, this is what God does. Hello? So if you find a verse in your Bible that said, God can do this, that means God can do it. You understand me? Yeah. So this is why you need to understand that God is like the ter- the word of God is a territory where God operates. He cannot go beyond his word. You understand? Yeah. So everything in the word is good for you too. Yeah. I'll give me a good amen. amen. You know, we start with this verse because it's something very important here. If you read the verse, be, uh, the, 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 the 19 first, let's go 19 first. God said, here, behold, I want to do something new. This is my will. This is what I want to do. This is what I think about you. I want to do something new for you. You understand? I'm going to open doors. I want to do something. But before he can stay, start with something new, he has to go to verse 18. He said in verse 18, okay, can we be fast? Because we're going to go fast. I'm trying to take the, you know, the temperature here to see. So he said, do not remember the former thing. Not consider the things of old. This is the deep key to entering the next level in your life. God want to do great thing, a new thing. But he require from you to do one thing. Do not remember the former thing. My God. You know, it's very strange that before he can start something new, he requires you to do something. 
you need to understand in life your past has the capacity, the power to put you at the door and not move in through the door. Your past is powerful enough to stop the hand of God. I'm telling you the truth. If you want truth, I'll preach you truth. If you want God bless you, I can switch to. You know, when I, I was praying this year and God told me the syllabus change. If you don't know God, you cannot survive in 2021 and 22 and 23 that are coming. It's not, a God, it's not about you say, I know God. No, it's more than that. You need to know, no, 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 no God. I don't know if you get what is coming. What is coming is not, is not a game. You need to be in the word of God to survive. Being Christian is not coming to church anymore. You have to know him deep in your spirit. I'm telling you the truth. Because a lot of things are coming. You understand? So you need to know God. This is very important. I beg of you guys. It's not time to do church like we used to. God is not an option anymore. He's the only one option. Yeah, clap well. This is why I was, he said, you, I want you to go to your churches and talk to them to get ready. I want to do something new, but they need to, to know how I operate. You know, you can know the word of God is a good thing. But if you don't know the ways of God, you'll be lost. You understand? God has a way to do things. He doesn't do things the way we think. No. He has his own ways. You understand? He said, I want to do something new, but you do not think about the former thing. Why? Because as a man thinking, so he is. You know, we thought that, uh, I don't know if I can go deeper in that level. Okay, let's go. You know, we thought that deliverance is only when we cast out devil. Let me tell you something about deliverance. There's three levels of deliverance. Uh, let's go in the word. I will teach this morning because of his cold, so we don't have to do much. Open your Bible in Exodus. I will see something here. Exodus 3. Exodus 3. Let me see here. God. Verse 7. Read for me. And the Lord said, mm -hmm. I have surely seen the oppression mm -hmm. of my people who are in Egypt, mm -hmm. and have heard their cry mm -hmm. because of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrow. Verse 8. So I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians, and to bring them up from their land to a good and large land, to a land flowing with milk and honey, to the place of the Canaanites. And the Hittites, and the Amorites, and the Parasites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites. Amen. You see, listen well. First, he said, I saw, okay, the oppression on my people. So for deliverance to start, the person needs to know that he's oppressed. He needs to realize that there's something wrong about his life. This is the first stage of deliverance because we cannot pray for you if you feel like you are comfortable. You know, if you think that everything is good for you, so what's the need for us to pray? So deliverance starts when you know that there is an issue in your life that you need to address. It can be anything, but it starts by you recognizing that, hey, I have an issue here. You understand? That's the first stage. So that we cannot help somebody that does not need help. You know, if we say you have an issue and you say, no, me, I'm good. That means you close your heart to deliverance. 
This is why I don't waste time talking to people when I say, hey, this is what God showed me about you. And you come and say, no, I'm not like that. So good, keep you the way you are. And we see in five years where you go. You understand? So deliverance starts by you recognizing that I have an issue that God needs to address. So they start crying to God. God say, okay, I saw the oppression, I saw the suffering, I will come. And the second stage, he brought Moses to come and do what he did. All the ten plague, whatever you need. This is the second end. This is where we say we cast out devil. It's too easy to do. You understand? He dealt with Pharaoh and all these Pharaoh and all these people, right? It's the way when you come to church and say, Oh, stand up in the name of Jesus. Oh! It's done. But read well. Verse 9. No, no, the verse before, eight, yeah. He said, I have come down to deliver them of the end of the Egyptian. This is why the pastor came and played. He's putting his hand on you, cast out all your devil, all the demon and everything. To bring them up. That means, when you know that you have an issue, and we pray for you, is the second stage of your deliverance. Until you go up, you still not deliver. I don't know if I can go deep in the teaching. This is why a, a lot of Christians are frustrated in church. Because after years, they don't see anything new. Hello, there's no church here. Yeah, yeah. There's no, you know, Oh, I don't know if I can talk to real people, man. It seems like more, everything that changed in your life is your age. <laughs> Nothing changed in your life. The way you came to church, you stay at the same position. This is not the God that we serve. It's too powerful for you to stay at the same level. No matter where you are, God is too powerful. That means there's an issue we need to address. He said, I will brought you up to the land. So the third level is for you to enter the land. And this is where a lot of Christians stop. Because they don't know how to enter the land. So after a year, you'll be frustrated. You're going to live in sin. This is why sin entered the church. Because when you don't know what you're going to do, you get bored. When you get bored, you start looking around because you have nothing to do. You don't know where to go. There's no purpose attached to your life. What are you going to do? It's sin. Because you not enter the land. This is the third level of deliverance. And for you to enter the land, you need to switch your mindset. Oh, I want to go deeper this morning. Man, I don't know if you guys are ready. <laughs> My God. I was like, God, so you mean, he said, yeah, 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 yeah. Because it, put, 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 put a uh, proverb. Proverb 14, verse 12. You know, I'm preaching many messages, so be patient with me. Verse 12. There is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. He said, there's a way that seems right to a man. That means there's a way of thinking that seems right to you, but it's going to kill you. There's a way, there's a path, there's a thought process. There's a mindset that you have that can be, that seems good to you, right to you. This is the way I'm supposed to live. But the Bible says is the, the end is death. You need to understand how God operates. 
Because you can be at your time of blessing, then your way of thinking will brought death to you. It's not about praying. No, stop it. Stop, please. I give you permission today. Stop it. You're too spiritual for us. Learn. <laughs> God help me. I need to be here. Mm. Yeah, I really need to be here because... Uh, yeah, you know, God can deal with the devil for you. But for you to live your life that you're supposed to live, you need to change your mindset. That means where you are right now is not because of the devil, it's because of you. And if you don't change your mindset, you remain at that level. It's if somebody tell you that religion is about God doing everything and you doing nothing is a lie. Is a lie. You have your word, you have your say in what's what is going on in your own life. I'm telling you. If you decided to stay at that level, nobody can make you move. Nobody. And for you to understand, I need to bring you to the creation time. Listen to me. When God decided to create man, I'm, I'm getting deeper now. So if you don't follow me now, you'll be lost. Because when God decided to create man, man was not the body first. Man was a spirit. You understand? And we all know that spirits are not living on earth. They're living somewhere. So God said, okay, since I, I create the earth, I need, they need a body so that they can operate in hell. Understand? So God created the body. He put your spirit. But the thing is, the dimension where your spirit operates is different from where your body operates. So we need a middle man. That's your soul. Your mind. So everything that the spirit does, it needs to come down in your mind so that your body can operate. So when your mind is close to the thing of the spirit, you can do not, God can do nothing in your life because of your mindset. Understand how God operates. This is why when you take time on your body, you miss it. Hello? Because the, the middleman in what is spiritual is your mind. Shy. That means if I want, if I'm the devil, I want to attack you, I'm not going to attack your body. I will attack your mind. So that when the spirit comes and says it's possible, your mind will think to say, mm. I don't think. God can do such a thing. I don't think so. As soon as your mind takes that position, you block the flow of the spirit. And your life will remain the same. It doesn't matter how long you pray. It doesn't matter how long you fast. You can fast 100 days like you're doing right now. But if your mind does not change, your fast is nothing. This is why the devil didn't attack Jesus when he was fasting. It's at the end he came. Because it's not about you fasting right now. As soon as you leave church, you show up to say, my friend, you say God is good, right? See your pocket now. <laughs> I'm telling you how the, the spiritual world Walking, how the devil is walking. He will come to you. He doesn't care about you singing. He doesn't care about me preaching. He's waiting on me. As soon as I finish everything, he comes to me and say, Well, you say God is here, right? See your life. Hello. This is where the spirit will come and say, I know the project I have for you. 
But for that truth to come alive in your life, your, your mind needs to grab and accept it. This is why you can be sick. We'll come and say, we'll pray for healing. In the name of Jesus, receive your healing. You, didn't need, you don't need to feel something in your body. The word of God is the word of God. All God is waiting is for you to say, I receive it. So no matter what I have in my body, my body, I don't care. I know God said, so I have it. It's by you maintaining that mindset that the flow for healing will come to you. This is what if you want to see before you believe, you cannot walk with God. You see, so your mind is the spiritual door. Your mind is the spiritual door between the spiritual and the physical. Guys, I think that we learn it with Abraham in 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 in, in Romans four, right? In verse seventeen, see. See you. So sometimes the way you think can be good to you, but it's not good for your destiny. It's not good because you cannot change the way God operates. You can't change it. He has His ways. You need to learn His ways. Oh no, me, I know, you know me, I know God. Oh yeah, you know God. You know God, right? Okay, no problem. Go. Me, I know I, I don't spend time in nonsense. She said, Oh no, no, no. I said, Do you know? Maybe I don't know yet. <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure you you know. So go. He said here. I made you a father of many nations. You see, I made you. We need to understand everything that God does is already in the past. It's already in the past. This, all God is waiting on you is for your mind to switch. You're not blessed when you're going to get money. No. You bless because you bless. I'm telling you. You see, for you to understand that, we have to go to Jeremiah. Let's go to Jeremiah. Now I'm preaching, you know. Let's go to Jeremiah. Jeremiah 1. And I know you know that verse. Before I was forming the belly of my mouth. Before, uh, can we slap you one day for you to stop and think about the verse well? <laughs> He said, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. That means, the way you are, you need to accept it. Because the way I formed you, I formed you because I know who I want you to be. So, this is why Lord, when a Christian has low self-esteem, he doesn't know God. If you don't like your body, exercise. But don't... <laughs> Can I preach? Yeah. yeah. If you don't like it, do something about it. But don't let this thing stop you. You have a low self-esteem. You don't want to extend your vision. This is sad. Because the day you die, God will come and ask you question. You're not here by mistake. You're not here because you want to, you need to get married, have kids. No. He said, before I formed you in the womb, I knew, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctify you. And I ordained you as a prophet of the nation. Do you know why he said that? Because Jeremiah was saying, I'm young. And in, a, in, in Jeremiah's family, there was no prophet. They all served God, but no one was prophet before. So he was looking his environment and said, God, how can you pick me? I don't know anything about prophet. But God said, I ordain you 
That means I gave you everything for you to fulfill your assignment. Wow. This is, do you know why I don't pray? Oh, let's pray. Let's pray. Spirit of death in the end in the end of the year. Don't come to me. He cannot come to me because I'm in an assignment. Until I finish, I won't die. This is your spirit, your mindset. You pray because of fear. Oh, do you know? Do you know why people die? We need to pray. Spirit of death. Spirit of death. Listen to me. The spirit of death knows that me I'm in an assignment. Until I'm done, I won't die. This is my mindset. So I don't have to fear anything. How you enter in 2021? You cannot remember what 2020 did to you? You're not ready. Because what you don't know in 2020, God used this year to make everything stable in your own life. I will explain to me, to you. You know, sometimes we put our trust in a lot of things that does not matter to God. So why when COVID came, God shook the nation. Everything, my God, everything that we thought was important, God, oh, he took it off. No, only God is important. Only God is important. I'm telling you. Only God is important. Because with your money, you can die. With your position, you can die. Hey, I was watching CNN 3, almost 290,000. Ah! One day, 1,000 people die for the same sickness. Man, we need God. He said, yeah, I, I ordain you. So for me, you have everything you need to succeed. And the good thing about it, can I go deeper, my daughter? You see, for, for you, for you, for you to use your iPhone, they cannot sell you the iPhone until they test it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. They, they can sell you the iPhone before they test it. So when a manufacturer start like a, a car, like a Mercedes. They're not going to start with the name first. They will do everything. They will test it. And then they will put the name. So every new thing that you have is new for you, but it's not new for the manufacturer. <laughs> I don't know if you understand. So God cannot put his name in you. Until he's already tested you. <laughs> so, so this is what there's no part of your life that can surprise God. He tested you. He know your flaws. He knows everything. And he said, you, I picked you. So when, when people talk about you, they don't know what God knows. They don't know. So they're just talking. But God knows. He said, hey, you have everything to succeed. I called you. Put the next verse. Verse 6. You see? This is where we are. God said, hey, I want you to go to do these things. And now, look what he said. He said, ah, Lord. Mm-hmm. You see the mindset? Mm-hmm. There's no devil here. There's no devil. There's no spirit of family here. This is an intense conversation between a man of God and God. So God said, I want you to go. And you yourself, you say, God, see, I don't know how to talk. I'm a kid. Do you know that your personal thought can destroy your own life? I will show you. Put Ephesians 3 verse 20. I don't know if I'm helping somebody today. It's not the devil that stops your life. It's you.
He said, now to him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask. Wait. When you are praying, you are asking. God, I want this. God, I want that. Right? Now he said, oh. That means sometimes you don't have to pray by your way you're thinking you are praying. And maybe it's not your prayer that God answers, but it's your thinking that God answers. So you can pray about something, but the spiritual realm will look at what you think. And this is what God answer. That means your life is just the way you think. If you don't know the truth, you will die. It's not about coming to church. What type of internal conversation you have about yourself? When you are alone, what are you thinking about you? There are volume in the spiritual realm. There are volume in the spiritual realm. This is why God said, I want to do something new. But the something new I want to do will find an enemy that call your memory. It's so powerful that it can, can even stop God. Chakaboshitaba. Say, oh God is powerful. Ah, he doesn't do it. He doesn't do it because your mind is powerful. God cannot change the mind. He can't. This is why he said in Romans 12, verse 2, he said, Do not be conformed, but be by what? He said, Do not be conformed. In this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. That means transformation comes only by the renewal of your mind. If your mind does not change, there is no transformation. This is why you can fast for two days. God, I'm not gonna call him anymore. Oh God, it's done. I'm done with this thing. After a month, you take your phone and say, Oh. You speak in tongue by yourself because there's something inside of you that says, Hey, you need it. Call this guy, though. Say, Hello. How you doing? I was just thinking about you. You know, you are not thinking about him. There's something else that your body requires. In the mind. Is the one. This is what the Bible says. Do not be conformed, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Do you know? Can I go deeper? Yeah, yeah. Do you know our mindset has formed? Our mindset has formed in the world. When you start talking about something all the time, that thought. Will be a fortress. What you call that? A, a fortress and a stronghold. So the way you think will attract a demon. Look at me and understand. The way you think, because they cannot come to your life like this. They can. They need permission. Sometimes by the way you do think they'll come, but by the way you think. So if you maintain a thought process. But let's say poverty. You see it all the way. Oh, I'm not this. I'm not that. You attract the devil that fits your thought life. So it will come. And then it's going to build a, 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 a strong hole in your mind. And at that level, it becomes a possession. You understand? Sometimes <laughs> we attract bad things by the way we think ourselves. I'm, I'm, I, I don't know. That's why I, I didn't even touch the door yet. Because you need to understand 
the mindset that you have can attract devil or attract the spirit of God. In any situation, before you can react, think about what you think. You need to have consciousness about your thought life. You need to be, you know, don't play with it. You know, in a spiritual, in a spiritual realm, there is no joke. No, I was joking. Hey, whatever you say, Jesus even said, you'll be condemned by what you say. Don't play with it. I was joking. Oh, you silly boy. Uh-huh. Who is silly? Do you know why Nigerian goes, they go up and up? They don't play with it. One day, my, one of my mentors told me, they went, they went, they were in the hotel, right? They were going down. And I think on the sixth floor or something, somebody pressed the elevator. So the elevator opened and they asked the guy, Are you going down? He said, No! I never go down. I never, I'm going up downstairs. I never go down. What do you mean I'm going down? I will never go down. I'm going upstairs, downstairs. Why? Because they understood. Don't play with this type of word. Don't play with it. Before you can enter in 2021, think about your process thought. How do you think? Because your thought can be a house for a demon of a house for the spirit of God to flow. I'm teaching. This is why when God want to bless Abraham, he need the thought of Abraham to be at the same level of what he said. Put back Hebrew, uh, no, Romans 4, verse 17. I don't know if somebody's blessed already. Yeah. Can you clap for Jesus? He said, I made you father, I give you. He said, listen, Abraham understood something. He said, God gave life, give life to death. And called things which are not exist as though they did. This is something that Abraham knew about God. Do you know that about God? Do you know that about God? Let me tell you something. You cannot think about something if this thing is not available in the spiritual realm. You can create something new. If God drop it in your spirit, that means it's available. So you can call it, but your mind will see. Oh, you call it. Are you, do you believe that it will come? And now this is the game. This is why they say the mind is a is a war field or whatever, or battle, battle field, whatever. Why? Because the mind decides what enter in your life or does not enter. Is not God. This is why people they don't go to church, mommy. But the way they think make them rich. Oh, you cannot say amen here. I'll go here. They don't need to pray in tongue. But the way they think. It's something different. I met people, but they don't pray. They don't pray. I'm telling you. But the, the mindset about victory in them is more than you need a pastor. I said, God, he said, no, you know what? I failed my way to success. I said, Jesus. That means every failure for him was for him a stepping stone to go up. Then you, when you fail, you cry. You don't come to church anymore. You don't want to do anything. Because, oh, he left me. He left me. He left me. Really? Let him go. When you know your purpose, you know that at some point in life, a lot of people cannot work with you. You know why you're thinking like this? Because you don't know why you are here. First prayer point. Before you enter in 2021, you need to discover your purpose. 
You don't, you're not here to get married and have kids. No. There's something about your life that God wants to make it happen. Do you know it? If you know, you're not going to let anybody play with your life. I'm telling you. It's better to be alone, going towards your purpose, to, to walk with people that don't even profit your destiny. It's very important. You know, the second subject is your altar. the will of the kingdom. The keys. You need to understand that in the, in the kingdom, there's many doors. Man, they don't open because you are cute. They're not going to open because you pray only. No. They will open because you know the key. This is why we are in church. Do you know why when we say prayer meaning... People that they don't show up because they don't see the effect of the prayer. Because we don't change what is working. <laughs> we don't change it. If it's working, you saw the result after you pray. When we say pray, you'll be the first because you have your testimony with you. But you have been praying, no testimony. When they say prayer time, they say, so, prayer becomes so hard to do. Because I understood. It's not because you pray that God answers. It's the way you pray. There's a protocol about prayer too. We need to teach you. Well, let's talk about those. <laughs> so, you see, everything that God wants to do in our life is operate through doors. You understand? But for you to enter the door, through the door, you need to fix that thing about your mindset. I'm telling you. Because he said, I will deliver you. I want, to, I want you to go up to a country. So they arrive in a country. They arrive. 40 days, they arrive. But what happened? They couldn't live in the country. Because of the way they were thinking. It's like in 2021, God will say, I have a blessing because I have the word for 2021. Amen. Put, put Isaiah 60, verse 1. Verse 1 first. I will see. What time am I supposed to stop, Pastor? <laughs> Don't say any time. I can preach. Put verse 11. I want you to read that one. Read. Somebody can read. Because I don't want you to say I'm lying. So read. Therefore, he said, therefore, your gate. I thought that you're going to say what? Amen. Continue. You know, you know, oh God. 
I, I wish you can see what God is about to do in 2021. I'm telling you, man. I'm so excited about 2021. You don't even know. Because God told me, say, yeah, I'm about to open the gates. They will be continually open. That means they will, you know, when doors are open, the move of God are easier. He said, I will move through this year to that coming. I will open doors. That means everyone here has doors that need to be open. Until the door is open, you will be persuaded. It can be the door of anything, but this door needs to be open. This is what God said. I want you to go. Talk about what I told you. I'm about to open the gate. No one will be able to close it. Except you. Stop looking at the witchcraft thing. They are too small. To stop you. I'm telling you. You are the one that's stopping your own blessing. He said, and how men may bring to you the wealth of the Gentile. I don't have time to go inside. Doors are very open. Let me tell you something. And the door responds to your mindset first. Is the gate. God can do something. They say, he said, put back the first verse that we saw, the, the, the Isaiah 43. Isaiah 43. Hmm. Hmm. Why? He said, he said, do not remember things. And then, do not consider. There's two different things here. Oh, I don't know if I can go deeper. Yeah. Uh, I don't feel you anymore. <laughs> he, he said, do not remember. It's the first thing not think about something. In the second thing, do not consider. Because everything that you consider, you give life to it. So, you have been hurt in your past. Do not consider it. Because as soon as you consider it, you bring yourself back in your past. So you are living in the present, but your past is still present. No, you're still in the past. Even though you are in your present time. So you can be in 2021, but you still live in 2000. Because something happened in 2000. It's too powerful. As soon as you think about it, there's an emotion that raised up in you. That means you brought yourself back. Say, do not consider. That means don't take time to give power to it. You, you, you should be able to talk about your past and laugh about your past. Don't cry about your past. You should be laughing about your past. If you cry, that means your past is still too powerful. No. There's a reason is in the past. You don't need it in your present. So every time, Pastor Rick, you think about your past and that thought brought a feeling in your body or an image and you feel some type of way that means this thing is still powerful. You brought yourself back in your past. God said, I want to do something new. But you do not think, do not remember, do not consider. When you give consideration to something that happened to you, you Bring the thing back to life. Your memory 
is so powerful that it can stop the will of God. Hello. Hello. This is why when you read Hebrew, Hebrew 12 verse, Hebrew 12, and it, it seems that God wants me to stay there more than to open the, the sermon on the door. Put Hebrew, Hebrew 12. It says, therefore, we also, since we are surrendered by so great cloud of weakness, lay aside Every weight in the sin. This is sweet. I like sweetness. It didn't start lay aside the sin because the sin is not powerful than the weight. Sin is not powerful like the way. Because God, Jesus dealt with sin. The blood of Jesus is so powerful to clean us from every sin. Sin is not the problem. He said, listen, you have a calling in your life. You are supposed to run a race. But make sure you don't carry heavy things. Because when you carry everything, you are going almost losing. So this is why he starts with, do not let the side, put on the side every weight. Weight of your past, of your whatever, has the power to slow you down. Sometimes it's not that you cannot go faster, you want to go faster, but the weight is there. And because there is a weight, you can't do anything. Every year looks the same. Remember, all that change in your life is your age. <laughs> God forbid. <laughs> November 29, I was doing my <laughs> 42 year birthday. And I said to God, I said, God, please. My wife asked me, do you want something? I said, no. You don't want to say no. no. Somebody asked me, do you want to say no? Why? You don't? I said, because I don't want something. I want God to do something. <laughs> you know, when you are aging, you think about time. Your perspective change. Your vision change. You know, you, you know. There's, you say, hey, did I do what I was supposed to do? <laughs> Listen to me. And God answered me. Listen. There's a man in the Bible called Methuselah. He lived 969 years old. But you don't even know his name. Because God can give you 200 years. You're going to do nothing. But Jesus, in only 33 years, until now. You know, this is why I say, God, I don't want popularity. I want impact. I want everybody that meet me, something come out of my life. But you cannot live that life with weight. No. You can't because the day, uh, listen, something happened at work. I want to go to my sister. Hi, sister. Me, myself, here. <laughs> if I explain what happened to me. Oh. So, you have something there. You come to your sister, trying to find her. She's going to start. Telling you a story, a story school. <laughs> you say, oh God, mine is better. You know what? Right. May God help you. <laughs> but no matter what's going on, you need to decide: is it worth put weight on me? No, no. It hurt me. I say it's okay. God bless you. I'll move because I have a race. In front of me. I have a goal. I have a purpose. I need to achieve something in my life. I'm not going to let my past come and destroy everything. Oh, there are people, as soon as you met them, your mood switch. Oh, why? <laughs> Who are you? So you have so much power that I can be laughing as soon as you come. 
Yeah, you, you can hear it. He's all right. Let him go. Let him go. It is say, lay aside every weight in sin. Sometimes you don't sin. You are holy, holy. But the weight that you have on you, man. I, I, I know I'm not supposed to say that, but <laughs> sin is better. Ah! Ah! Oh, look, listen. They, I, I meet people, you know, they think that because they don't live in fornication, they're entitled to get married. I say, who told you that? If you are holy, it's good for you. It's not good only for, you, for God. No, it's for you. Because you don't know if you open that door, what will come in your life. So if God will make you stay in that position, you should bless God and say, God, thank you for your grace. But don't take it and say, no, look at them. They are sinners. God bless them. Me, I don't see God that not bless me. He's not going to bless you. <laughs> because the way you think is wrong. Thank for your grace. It's a grace. You don't know my background. You don't know for me to take the mic and preach what I need to go through. What it takes to be me. So please. I don't know if I'm talking to someone here. I told you I'm going to preach a lot of sermons to you. I give you keys so that in 2021, you don't let anything stop you. There's a, there are weights. Have you ever thought about your weight? Have you? Do you know what stopped Moses? When God called Moses, he said, I want you to take them, bring them to that country. Moses said, yes. So in the mind of God, Moses was supposed to enter the Holy Land. But what stopped God? His character. And Moses, his character. Sometimes your character is a way that stops you. Everybody wants to bless you, but the way you switch. The, the, the way you switch is that like even <laughs> Moses does not want to talk to you. <laughs> so your own character is the weight that slows down your life. Somebody can come to Pastor Eric. Pastor Eric, you know, you have a, 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 a one of your daughter. You know, I love her. You know, I want to do it. Pastor Eric goes, hey! He's not, not going to say that, but in his heart, this is what's going I know. He's like, hey! and, and if he loves a brother, he's like, I love you. Let's pray about it. <laughs> he's not going to say, yeah, go, go, go. She's a good woman. No. He's going to pay price. Why? Because your character can mess up your own blessing. You know, listen, I'm, I'm talking about true spiritual fight. It's not about the devil. Your past, your memories, your mindset, your weight. I don't have time to go deep in weight. You'll be shocked. Hello? Hello? This is what Paul said in Philippians 3 verse 13. What, okay, I will stop soon. Philip, Philippians 3, verse 13. Let, let, let's go there. He said, brother, brother, <laughs> whatever. I do not count myself as, ha, I don't count myself I have apprehended, but one thing I do, that means every day, this is one thing I do. As soon as I wake up, what I do, forgetting those things we are, which are behind and reaching forward. That means you cannot go forward if you don't forget the thing behind you. You can't. You can't. Sometimes you need to divorce with your past. Divorce with it. Say, I'm a new creation. Everything is new about me. So when the past comes in your thought, you stop it. Say, hey, mm -mm. 
This is why I told you, you need to be conscious about your thought life. There's, you know, in a spiritual world, your thoughts are not neutral. Mm -mm. If you're a spiritual man, thoughts are not neutral. This is why, even though when you want to meditate or you say, let me take a time, I'm not going to think about anything. Oh, dear. As soon as you do that, the, the thoughts start flowing like, phew, phew. Why? There's no neutral in the spiritual realm. So you need to give power to your thought. Say, when I wake up, forget me what I pass. I'm blessed of the Lord, my God. Thank you, God, for this day. I can see new doors open in my way. I'm, you know, this is just life you need to live every day. Every day. No matter what's going on in 2021, you need to live that life. Forgetting the past. Moving forward. I'm saying that because I was praying for the church and God told me there are doors he opened for you long time ago. This is the sad part about it. There are doors are open for them long time ago. You were not supposed to stay even near. I was sad in my spirit. I said, God, did I do something wrong? Or oh, Pastor Rick didn't do, or oh, what well, well, he said, yes, because the door can be open. May your mindset can remain at the same level where you don't find the need to move. You see things too big. Then me, oh God. What can I say? Your way of thinking is the spiritual door. Is the door for the spiritual realm. So as soon as you think about something, make sure it's coming from God. If it doesn't, don't allow it to stay in your life. You cannot control it to come. Then don't let them come and create a stronghold in your own life. So they're living for free. This is why after a good sermon, you say, Amen, Amen, glory to God. I was blessed to be, oh, the preacher is good and handsome like me, you know. <laughs> and as soon as you leave, the spirit comes back in your thought. And listen, you do the same thing over and over and over and over again. I'm telling you, you do the same thing. Because here, there's the chief, the chief priest. <laughs> <laughs> the voodoo priest is there. He's, he's in your mind right now. This is why you can pray for in the name of Jesus, go. Go, the spirit goes. But the way the person thinks, the spirit says, eh, let's go back. And we do deliverance. Open deliverance. Open. That's why I say, hey, if I cast out your demon and you come back again, I will slap you. So raise up your hand. In the spirit and you fall down. Hey, I will open my head. Stand up. Hey. What did you do? The same spirit cannot come. That means we cast the spirit. It goes to the dry, dry places. He doesn't have peace there. And is in your life, he has peace. Come on. Can, can we be real? He goes to the dry places. He doesn't have peace. But he has the God to come in your life because in your life he has peace. Jesus. That means you need to create an atmosphere in your life where they cannot even show up at your door. It's your way of thinking. They can't show up. And they say, oh, the economy is not my economy. 
Me, I'm living with the economy of the kingdom. I'm blessed today. I'm blessed tomorrow. No matter what's going on, I'm blessed. And blessing is not only money. Blessing is a mindset. This is why he said, I anoint your head. You, you know that verse? Psalm 23, right? Verse what, 6 or something. Listen, what he said. Put it for me. I'll show them something. Anoint your head with oil. And your cup run. Why did they? Why he has to anoint your head and not your hand? Or your cup? He didn't get it. I was there. He has to anoint your head first so that everything in your hand can run over my God. Because he doesn't anoint your hand. No. Because whatever you have in your hand, you can lose it. But whatever you have in your head, even though you lost what is your hand, it will come back again. This is why it takes time to anoint your head, your way of thinking, so that your life can be run over, your finances run over, your, your health run over, your blessing run over, because it starts in your head. Hey. Stand up. I think if I don't stop here... <laughs> I'll preach. Can you clap for Jesus? It doesn't matter at what level you are in life. No matter your level of where you are right now in life, we need to see the glory of God in that level. You, if you doesn't, if you don't drive a Mercedes now, it's not a bad thing. Don't see yourself as a failure. No, even though you're driving your Toyota, you need you need to see the glory. That means we you you proud of yourself because when we see you, you're happy. This is what it's about. It, it's not about money, money. No, 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 no. No matter where you are, there's a certain glory. That, that follow you. He said in Proverbs 4 verse 18. He said that the path of the just. Is like a shining light. That shine more. Oh my God. What? Yeah. What, what version is this one? Okay. Shine brighter and brighter until he reach his full strength and glory, my God. That means your life, you're supposed to go from glory to glory. This morning, I want your mind to switch. You cannot accept your level anymore. It's not normal for you to stay there. It's not normal. God paid the price for you to go up. But your mindset, even though... I, you know, I can see in the spirit. Even though I'm preaching that people, they say, yeah, but they, they say, mm. why the mm come from? Can you slap the mm? Slap it. It will kill you. You're supposed to go brighter. It, you do know how God is glorified. God is not glorified when you speak in tongues. No. God is glorified when they see you and they see your testimony too. Oh, God. They see you. They see your testimony. Listen. Put, put, act of the apple four. Uh, act, act four. Act four. Act four. Woo, I feel, I feel the glory. Act four. Act four. Put the verse, verse 20, 20, 20 something, 20. Put verse 20, I'll see something for Okay. Hmm, let me see here. I'm pretty sure it's somewhere. You need to 
Verse, put the first 14. The story is like, they healed this guy. He couldn't walk, you understand, on the day of the Sabbath. So they arrest them, whatever. And then they, they, are, they are talking. And they say, put the verse before. Hmm. I like this. I like the word of God, my God. I pray that God does it in your life too. Amen. Say amen well. Amen. Hey, they, they say, Los, now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived, they perceived that they were not educated and entrained them, their mother. Oh God, you, you need to reach a level where your boss asks to come. Where, where, is, where, where does we, wisdom coming from? You know, it's like, it's like I, 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 an African man can think like this. I'm telling you, this is the way God is glorified. Because you operate at a super level of life. You know, the way you operate is different. They, say, they, 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 were, they were amazed. You know, and they realize that they have been with Jesus. Let me tell you something. You cannot be with Jesus and people does not see that you have been with Jesus. You can't. The, 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 the thing is... It, it's because your mindset is, is stopping God to operate. You fear too much. Let the worst happen, we'll see. Amen. What can be worse? Even though you walk through the valley shadow of death. What's the worst? Let the worst come. It's only then you start living. I'm telling you that thing. I don't want to go there. Put the verse, verse 13, 14. You see? And seeing the men who have been here standing with them. That means they can always criticize your God, but they will not deny the fact. Mm. <laughs> they can criticize your God, your coming to church and everything, but they cannot discuss the fact. Because you are walking with your testimony at hand. If you don't see my God at least, see this? It's the proof that God is with me. This is at that level God wants you to raise up this morning. But you need to switch your mindset. You need to switch your mindset. To the point that they want to arrest them. But they couldn't say anything again. Why? Because there is a proof. I'm here to tell you, in 2021, there are proof that are coming on your way. Perhaps. Do not remember your past. Let it go. It didn't work yesterday. It's okay. God is about to do something new in this season. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, this is why I say the door shall be open. You are the only one that can close that door in 2020. If you want to raise and uh, you want to reach a level or high level in finance, it's possible. All you need to do is set your mind in this thing. You know, let me tell you something about riches when you ask God for money. To fulfill your purpose, God will give it to you. But when your asking is just for you to have a name or drive a car, God has no interest in your request. And this is materialism. But when it's for the purpose, if you know your assignment, Pastor Hick, you are the apostle of this town. You cannot live like this. You can't live like this. You can't. I'm telling you, 
You are the apostle. God sent you here for you to reach many nations. Why are you stopping? If they don't follow you, it's okay. Make the move. Let everybody with you in that vision following you. You are too comfortable in this season right now. You were too comfortable. He has to change. Think twice again. Next year, at the same period, I don't know how long you are in that list, but you need to fix yourself to buy that building again. The door is open. Let your mindset. If somebody comes and says, Oh, see you people here. We are not enough. Let me tell you something. God is your source. Not man. When you see men, you don't see God anymore. But when you see God, man does not matter. God call you here. Not because I minimize these people. No, I love them. But there's a great field waiting for you. The door is open. But what I saw, your mind and the mind of your people was stopped of fear of what's going to happen. Nothing will happen until the God say it will happen. Hey. There is a great field in front of you. Don't stop. I want you to think yourself. What stop you in your own destiny? What stop you? You need to answer to that question this morning. What stop you? What stop? Is it a man? Is it your children? Is it what? Nothing. Is it money? Is it money? Money is nothing. I don't value money. No, I value God. Hey, God is my source. Every time I worry about money, I start having issues. Because you need to understand the spiritual realm. You, we don't give you what you want. We give you what you are. Oh, God, I didn't get it. We, we don't give you what you want. So your one spirit, I want, I want, I want. God, I want, I want, I want. Stop it. Say, God, I am. I am. <laughs> I am, I am, I am. Can you say, I am money? I am. I am. When you talk about money, don't be offended. No. It's for who? So, you, you are a believer. You want to stay in your smallest mentality and let the one outside be big. You go and ask for a job to... You go ask for the job to a man that not that does not know God. When you you know you know God. At some point in life, you need to switch your thought. Say, God, I'm more than this. There's something about me. I don't know if you can sleep. Me, I sleep place nice. I just say, God, that there's something in me. It's greater than where I am. He said, Yeah. Who stress, stretch your mindset, stretch it. Everything that God does in his word. If you read a story about something amazing that happened, that means God can do it again. The only problem is your mindset. This is why this morning I came. There are doors. You listen, if God does not open doors for us, we'll stay here for years. Those spiritual doors are very powerful. They are gate that give you unlimited access. I'm telling you, this only door can God can open in your life, and your whole life will change. Financially, they will change. Only one door. This is why the devil is not in your job, he's at the at the gate of your blessing. Stop praying. Oh God, I every every spirit in this job. Leave the job. Say God. Open the gates. Yeah. Open the gate. In this same job, 
they will, they will come and bound him. Bound. He said, bow, bow. And say, hey, God. Boss. How are you, boss? Why? Because God had just opened the door. You fight the wrong fight. I'm telling you. When I understood the mystery of God. When, you know when they arrest, uh, arrest Peter? They put him in the prison. Yeah. With doors and God. Every door. Why? Because he knows you can pass one door, but for you to go to the next level, there's another door. If you don't know it, you'll be here. No, you should raise your prayer life. Say, God, open all doors in my way. Let your angel come and free me from this situation. I cannot stay there over years. This is not the God that we serve. No. Say, God, God is punishing me because I sinned. Really? Do you know God? Your assignment is bigger than your sin. Yeah. Your assignment is bigger than your sin. You stop yourself because you still feel guilty. That's it. God is done with it. Just you. Move on now. Move on in your ministry. If you do something in this church, don't, don't stay at the same level. No. When you pray, God, open the door in this ministry that I'm doing right here. I want to raise up to a certain level of excellency. You know, the spirit of excellency is not when you do great things. I'm sorry. But it's the smallest thing that you do that we can see that you will be great tomorrow. Because you do small things with a great spirit. It's different. Oh no, when I'll be, I'll, I'll preach. No, no. We can see that spirit of excellency when you do the small thing that you're doing. Because when it's, it, it's, not, it's, not, it's not done uh, like you want it, you cannot say, it's like, no, 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 this is wrong. We're not supposed to do that. When you, you see those type of brother, take them. They have that spirit of excellency. But when they come, say, oh, okay, well, I'm not in charge, so get out. No, the spirit of Felix is start in small things. So wherever you are, you need to have that spirit in you. God, no, I need to move forward. I need to be a blessing. I need to be a blessing. I need to be a blessing for many nations. That's your prayer. This is the mindset you need to have. You need, oh God. I will stop here. I have so many things to say. But yeah, I will stop here. And, and when it comes to our prayer, I will give you the last key and we'll pray. Okay? Put Luke, Luke 11 verse 9. This is what Jesus was teaching about prayer. And he opened the mystery, gave a key. Understand me. He says, so I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. That means there are times in life where asking is good. Is the level where you are. You should ask. God give me. It's okay. But when after asking, 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 nothing happens, that means you need to find. <laughs> you need to find the reason why after asking you didn't receive it. Mm. Don't stay in the asking mood <laughs> or mood. You're not, not going to get anything. No. You need now to look, look for it. What's going on? Why is not working? Because God says something here, I don't see it. What I'm not doing right, I need to know. It's not about praying it anymore. It's what's going on in my way of doing things. Why is not opening the way it's supposed to be? 
This is the third level. At that level, it's not, you know, Seigneur, bénis-moi. Oh God, bless me. Oh God, oh God, no, it's not God. Show me. Show me. I need to know. Radeskadeba. Your prayer is not God bless. Is it God? I need to know. Gariada sitaraba. What do you have for me? Show it to me. I need to know. Why is no working? What am I doing wrong after years and years and years and years? God, what's going on here? He said, When you look, you when you seek, you find. That means is the law. No matter who you are, if you ask, they will give you. You know the kid, what I love about kids? They are champion in asking. Why? Because the spiritual law. Mommy, give it to me. No. Mommy, give it. No. They will stay on your neck and you say, you're tired. Take it. It's a spiritual principle. And I will show you another one. And you will see. And then he said, when you find now, knock it. And this is where you are right now. You need to knock for doors to open. It's not about asking anymore. Knocking is a different type of prayer. Knocking is a mindset that is, is a certain level where you don't accept any BS. Yeah, you don't accept any BS. You don't have enough time to wait. God, I don't have enough time. No, God. Something needs to be done here. That's your mindset. You knock and he say, and it will be open. Verse, put the next verse out to something. Why? For everyone who asks. <laughs> for everyone who asks, receive. For everyone who seek, find. And to and to him that knock, he will be open. That's the spiritual key I give you for free. Amen. I receive it. I receive it. I receive it. When in your mindset you understand that every door that you knock. They will open. You not stop praying. We don't have to say, pray, 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 pray. pray. Why? Don't pray. Don't sleep. But when you know that there's a door that needs to be opened, my God, you don't sleep. You don't, you don't, you don't. <laughs> you, you don't sleep. Hi, guys. Hi. You don't sleep. I'm looking for a verse. I will give it to you. My God. I was like, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Mm. Mm. Put the verse 8. Oh, it was the verse 8. See something here. Verse 8. Verse 8. For you to see those keys, you need to look. In the word, take time to read your Bible. It's not easy. He said, he was talking about a parable about prayer. He said, somebody received people at a place, there was no food, so they went to the guy that made bread, and she was asking the guy, the guy said, Oh, I'm tired, my family, everybody is sleeping. And Jesus gave us a key. He said, I said to you, though he will not rise and give it to him because he is his food. Oh. So I'm not going to give it to you because I know you. I'm not going to give you because I love you only. I love everybody, but it's time for me to sleep and I sleep. He said, but of persistence, he will rise and give me as many he needs. This is, this is, this, this verse right here changed my prayer life. He said, 
I'm not going to give it to her because she's crying. Oh, God, do it. No, I'm going to give it to her because I know her. I will give them to her because of persistence. And when I, 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 I'm going to raise up, I'm not going to give him what she asked for as many that she needs. It's like, it's like our life is the result of the way you do things with God. I'm telling you the truth. I'm going to go, but until the end of the year, let your prayer be with persistence. You need to fix your objective. Say, God, this is what I want in 2020. Even though you don't want to give me because you don't like me like you do. But you give me because every day I'm at your door. Knocking, knocking, knocking. This is how you get things in the kingdom of God. This is why you say the kingdom is for violent people. You didn't get it. You say, oh, no. No, don't pray today. Stop tomorrow. No, every day. You know, because you are too busy, set time for it. You're never going to have time to pray. I'm telling you the truth. You need to set a time, a schedule. I, if I have to go at work at 6, let me sleep early. Pray from 4 to 5. This is commitment. A lot of things happen. You'll be shocked. I came here to say, there is a door in front of this church. I will talk to your pastor about it, what he has to do for this church. It's going to cost you preaching. Cost you, yeah. But you will do it. You will do it. You will do it. But you, as far as you, there is a door in front of you. Amen. I came here to say, 2021 is the open door years. Amen. Now that the door is open in your spiritual life, you need to have a proper mind to grab. Hello. Ah, God, I don't know how we're going to pray. But I want you to start to say, God, let my mind be on Christ. Let's start with that. Because before we can go in the spiritual realm and pray, let's God say, God, I want to believe in greatness. I want to believe in, in blessing. I want to be... Oh, God. Help me pray, Pastor Eric. I say I want you to pray. It's time to pray. Open your mouth and say, God, let the power of the past live my life in the name of Jesus. I don't want my past to be powerful. In the name of Jesus, I refuse the past to be present now. I refuse it. No matter what happened in my past, I want to free myself from it in the name of Jesus. Let the weight of the past be removed from my shoulder. In my spiritual mind, I want to be free from the past. Everything that happened in the past. In the name of Jesus Christ. Le baro de bosika raya tabashi de lebebe Raka baro de ria baba reke teke bo sararate Lika baro de suriye de baro de koko baba She de be de raya tari biya ta soto robo Le ria ki ya kata ba be 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 le baba be Every weight, every weight on you Let that weight come down in the name of Jesus Let that weight come down in the name of Jesus, I break the power of this way. I break the power of this way in the name of Jesus. We are taking off the name of Father. We are leaving the name of Father. Every way of the past, every way of the past, we are 
Every power of the past be removed in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I want you to pray for your mindset. Please. You're going to say, God, every spirit that lives in my mind through a thought that I think is right, but is wrong, let that spirit live my life in the name of Jesus. Let everything that spirit produces in my life be cast away from my life in the name of Jesus. I refuse that spirit. The way of thinking that are not right. Father God, please remove that thought process in my life. In the name of Jesus, I want you to pray that prayer. <laughs> Jesus, free my mind, free my mind. Every spirit of of fullness, every spirit of poverty, every spirit that operates in my mind, I pass you in the name of Jesus. Jesus. 
Refuse, refuse. No spirit can live in your mind. No spirit can live except the spirit of God. Every spirit that brings sadness, sorrow on your life, cast out that spirit in the name of Jesus. You need to go up. You need to enter your destiny. You need to move forward. Rakate presike reba, liki yonka la basika raide kopeve, liaka yata siki ribi raide sonkerebo, bela yesi yonde le 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 le, bela kaya siki le 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 le, shire ba raide spiri la raide Release the man. Listen to me well. I just saw that vision now again. I was, I saw something, and it, God, you know, every, don't, don't, don't misunderstand heaven and the spiritual realm. It's not the same thing. Heaven is heaven, the spiritual realm is not heaven. You know, everything that enters your life needs a door. Everything. If you want joy, joy needs a door. And it's still your mindset. Your mind is the spiritual door for everything that you receive from the spiritual realm. It can be good and bad. This is why the way you think will brought something bad in your life. Because you open your door to that thing that is in the spiritual realm. The spiritual realm is not heaven. Don't misunderstand. It's two different things. The spiritual realm is the atmosphere where spirits are living. And a lot of things operate there. There's a lot of things that happen in the spiritual realm. So if you want something from God too, he has to go from that spirit realm. You understand? Yes. And your mind is the gate that opens that thing. So if you don't have joy and you want to have joy, set your mind on joy. Yeah. Hey. You open yourself to receive something joyful. Don't play with it. This is the way you operate the word of God. Set your mind. He said, set your mind on the thing above. Why? Because it's the way things happen in your life. If this year, coming year, a thought come and say you can, ask that thought why I can. Why? Why? It's not better than me. Why me again? Why I cannot act? act. By the, I will. This is the way you operate. You know, all this discussion about God and Jeremiah, it was in silence. You know, when you are alone, this is where the fight starts. So make sure your own conversation are in your own control. So every thought that raised up 
and I want to talk to you about something that you can't know is not going to happen, cancel it. Cancel it. Don't play with it. It's the spirit that try to try to get your attention to open the door so that you can speak. No, 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 no. Don't play with it. This year, this is the game that you need to play to win in the game of life. Hello? Let me read the verse and we pray with that. You know, when, I don't need to, you know the story. When they arrest Peter, the church was praying. And when the church was praying, there's a reality that happened. The angelic realm opened. Everybody here has an angel that willing to open doors for you. You need to activate that angel. I'm telling you, you need to activate because when they were praying, the angel showed up in the cell. He said, rise up. And everything, the, 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 the chain fell. Everything. So, they walked through every gate. Every gate. He, was, he thought that it was, it was a vision. But in reality, something was happening. I want you to activate your angel and say, open the door of my work, of my destiny, of my ministry. As I'm praying right now, open the door for 2021. Let everything that belongs to 2021 enter my life in the name of Jesus. I refuse to stay in 2020. Open your mouth and pray. Open my ministry, open my blessing, open my blessing. Riata da barre que te bebe, riata sutoria de bebe, chita capa. Listen, listen to me. Don't let anybody put you down. God tested you before you came here. You have everything to succeed here. Please don't look around. It's inside of you. You need to unlock your potential. You don't go buy your apple and download things for your apple to work. Your apple works by itself. It doesn't need anything. If you add something just because you want to. But Apple makes sure that what you pay for, you can have it in your phone. It's the same thing. God tested you. So that door about greatness, you have the ability to enter. 
Don't stop yourself by your thought life. Don't let anybody put you down. Your past is your past. Your failure was your failure. Today is a new day. Open your mouth and declare in the name of Jesus. I enter through that door. I have the blessing. I have the knowledge. Let us abide in the Hallelujah. We're going to pray again. I don't know if you're tired. Me, I'm not tired. I'm here to bless you. I want God to be open to you. Listen to me. There's a mystery about those. Let's put Genesis. 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 No, Genesis. Yeah. 19. Verse. I think. 10. Verse 10. I think. Yeah. Let's go. It's about Lot and his wife. Angel enter the city of Sodom. Sodom. And then, you know, they saw the angel entering the house to a door. And then since they want to have something with those angels, they want to sleep with the angel, they ask the Lord to bring the angel back. They are knocking at the door. And there was a mystery. The Bible said, but the men reach out their hand and pull Lot out of the house with them and shut the door. Okay? And they struck the man, the angel. The angel struck the man who were at the doorway of the house with blindness, both small and great, so that they, they become worried, thing, worried, trying to find the door. You know, the door was there. They pulled out Lot. And then they were talking to Lot. Give us those angels. Give us those angels. By the time they returned, the angel blind them. So they couldn't find the door anymore. When you are in your season, sometimes the devil blinds you. So that you cannot see the door. You're going to pray to say in 2021, you recognize every door in front of you. Because sometimes doors are that they don't look like doors. They don't look like opportunities. When we say door, you need to understand. It's not a physical door. It's sometimes it's opportunities that you need to know, to feel, to say, this is the door that I was looking for. What the devil knows, he knows that he cannot stop you. 
but it's going to blind you so that you'll not be focused wasting your time when the door is open. You're going to say in 2021, every door belongs to me. I'll see them. I'll enter them. I'll experience them. Open your mouth and pray. You're not gonna miss your season this year. You enter to the door. Jesus, I see my cause, I see. I see the opportunity. I enter the opportunity. I'm not going to miss my blessing this year. I'm not going to miss my opportunity. Jesus, Jesus, because of time, you're going to pray. I told you this before the end of the year. Pray only like we pray today and, and, and you add whatever your pastor will tell you, but you need to pray for those. Put 1 Corinthians 16, no, 16 year verse 9. That will be the last prayer I'm going to do. And yeah, 1, 1 Corinthians 16 verse 9. He say, there's a door for a great door. Listen, this is Paul talking. For a great door, an effective door has opened to me. It's already open. And there are many adversaries. I'm telling you. There are doors that have been open long years. But the adversary. And since you don't know how to pray. Or you let the devil take advantage of what's going on in the, in the natural realm. You forget that everything that you live in here starts in the spiritual realm. I'm telling you. Everything that happened here starts from there. This is why you need to live here. Go there first. Be a winner there. And you see victory on ground. I'm telling you. So you're going to pray and say, every adversary at that door, great and effective door that God opened for me long time ago, this year coming, I will enter it. Remove every adversary in front of your door. This is the all prayer. Say, any gatekeeper, any adversary, I cast you in the name of Jesus. Every 
Access to prosperity, access to ministry, access to blessing. Be removed, gatekeeper. Every gatekeeper, I cast you in the name of Jesus. Be removed from my God. Be removed from my God. Be removed from my God. In the name of Jesus. Be removed from my God. In the name of Jesus. Let the fire of God come down. Let the fire of God come down. Let the fire of God come down. Let the fire of God come down in the name of Jesus. Be removed from my gate. Be removed from my door. I need to access the Jesus, Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You know, I, I, I don't want to leave you like this because in my spirit, God showed me that everything that a man saw, this is what he's going to reap, is a spiritual law. This year, whatever you want to see, sow on it. When I say so, it's not only make offering and sacrifice. No. If you want to be great, what do you learn about this thing that you accomplish? You know, opportunity is always present for somebody who's ready. I'm telling you. You need to invest your time for your ministry to be great. You need to invest your time for something that you like. So that the thing that you like can be manifest. If you don't sow time for the thing that you want to see coming and you're just praying, you are wasting your time too. Church, I need to be open and truthful to you. You need to sow in what you want to see. It's very important. You cannot be lazy. You want to do politics, you don't have any books about politics. You want to make money, you don't know anything about business law. Come on, guys. It's not about prayer only. You need to invest knowledge, acquire knowledge in what you want to do. You want to be great in anything. It requires knowledge. Invest time in knowledge. You see me preach like this. I study my Bible every day for hours before I can go sleep. I set a discipline on me to say, if I don't study for this period of time, I don't have the right to eat. This is my discipline. You understand? So when I wake up early in the morning, I start studying my Bible because I understood the power of Bible. Invest time in knowledge so that when you pray, God can use what you know to help you achieve what you want. It's not about praying only. No. 
invest so time, learn new things, and God will bless you. Don't just blind your eyes and play, pray, pray, pray. No, pray is important. No, he says, seek, seek knowledge. Learn so time, invest your time, meet different people. You understand? You know, environment is important. Sometimes check yourself in a great hotel. Even though it costs money, we don't care. Your spirit needs to be at peace in this type of environment. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. One day I was saying to the church, I went, I I said, you know what? It's okay. I took my staff. I went to the risk cattle in Dallas. It's 450 the night. I said, okay. I want to say the word. (laughs) I, I don't care. I go, I check myself there. And I was in the bed. I said, this is how people sleep. Good, I'm rich then. Amen. You cannot walk with a poor mentality and expect great things. It doesn't work like this. No. Change your environment. When you talk to people, they talk about, oh, it's too hard. No, no, no. Leave those persons. Connect yourself to different people. When they see you, they say, you, you can do it. You can do it. And you know, when, when the tab comes, you don't look, oh, how much I have? Oh, how much is oh, only $2.50? Ooh, okay, I'll pay for it. That's the way you raise up your standard. And the spiritual realm recognizes you. This guy, you want to be great. Greatness will come to you. Don't pray for greatness and stay in your poor mentality. I'm sorry. He's not working like that. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. It's not about being excess. No, don't do things to please people. Do it for you. I didn't go there for people to know that I was at the risk. I went there myself. You know, I said, yeah, let me check in. I came there, oh, you want to pack? Oh, you have a nice car. I said, thank you. Oh, we, we, we're going to pack here for you because very nice. I said, how much? He said, $40, the packing. Then I said, okay, do it. I met people there. What you're doing in life? I said, you know, I'm a man of God. <laughs> I'm a man of God. And they flew me here to come. I get to the airport. I saw my seat. I said, no, mm-mm. business, please. I upgrade myself. Next time you want me to come here, change this one. <laughs> Hello? Yeah. You know, it's not that you've been proud, but it's a, it's a frequency you tried yourself to reach. If you think that I'm lying, start, decide to do something. Let's say, I'm going to, it's like your rent house. You can be in a small apartment. You say, you know what? I'm going to go to this apartment. It's $1,000. But you used to pay $800. By the time you start paying $1,000, at first it's going to be kind of difficult. But when you used to, $1,000 is nothing to you. Because you raise up your level to that standard. It's the, it's a spiritual run. I'm telling you. If you open your gate, God will flow it with a lot of things. But if you close it, listen to me. Let me go deeper in this thing. I'll leave you. It is not to buy anointing. Because the prophet, he has anointing. But he died poor. You know, it's not about oil. Because he had oil. But the oil was in a small continent. You know, and the prophet said, you see what? It's not to buy oil. The oil will take the, dim- the, 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 the dimension that you give him, the oil. So go borrow some vase and put oil on it. You're going to see that oil will flow in every different vase that you put the oil on it. That means if you decide that you are great, your oil will feel the greatness that you're giving to him. And the oil stop when the vase, there was no more vase. That means your anointing stop where you decided it will stop. It's a mindset. It's not about it's not about being poor or rich. You are rich here first. I say I upgrade. How much I pay? Sixty nine dollars to flow business. Really? She so said, "Oh, business? Hell no! Why? Sixty nine dollars only. Sometimes you just ask. You'll be surprised when I say business. You thought I put thousand? No, sixty nine dollars." See, give vase to your grace to expand. 
to stay in that thing. Oh no, me, 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 you, me, 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 and the me, me, you will die. Your mindset will change. Your mindset will change. And you're going to attract great things. The Bible says, he hates the blessing. The blessing is He likes cursing, cursing king. You are what you are. The way you dress is because you like it, right? It's the same thing with spiritual life. If you like to be great, start thinking and act great. So in greatness. It's not only money, no. So for your future. In 10 years, I'm going to be somewhere there where depend on what I'm doing now. Because if you like it or no, in five years, we all be gonna, we're going to be somewhere. But it's not everybody that will live where they want him to live. They will drive wherever they want him to drive. If you don't do it now, you're going to live where you don't want to live. You're going to eat where you don't want to eat because you didn't sow to reap in the spiritual realm. Sow in greatness. You'll be great tomorrow. Discipline yourself in what you want to achieve. Give you time. Learn. Invest time in you. And you see tomorrow God has something to take you. David didn't show up like this. God has to prepare him first. If you can kill the bear, you can kill Goliath. Because when the bear raised up, he's like, Goliath, you sold the bear. Goliath is nothing for you. Is that the way God works? Please invest in yourself. 